When someone is in a mental or behavioral health crisis, a call to 911 can become a crisis in itself. So what should happen when police, jail, and the use of force are not the best answers? Tonight, the I-Team with reimagined response teams aiming to redefine bad or even deadly outcomes. I probably would have attacked someone just to have the officers be forced to um, and shoot me. Brian Solace was talked into living. Okay. The call came out that it was a subject at the train station with the potential of uh, being a suicide by cop situation. So we knew there was a danger. The tense scene captured on police dash cam video in June 2021 as the distraught teenager threatened suicide at the West Suburban Aurora train station. Among the responding officers, a newly formed crisis intervention unit with specially trained police investigators and social workers. I was at that point where I was angry at everyone, everything, even at myself. Solace opened up to the I-team about the day he wanted to end his life at 18. An argument with a family member and his unmanaged mental illness sent him spiraling. He had a knife and was threatening to use it. Just cracked and just, just was done with everything. Those co-responders spending nearly an hour and a half talking with Solace until he gives up the knife. No one injured. He's gotten help and we were part of that process and we would have never been because it was not something that the police department had. Yeah. It's something that we are doing now. To deal with the increasing number of mental health crisis calls, police agencies across Illinois are adding social service programs to their departments. In the middle of a crisis or as a well-being follow-up, this Aurora unit works to identify individuals better served with intervention. Kind of check and see how she's doing. APD says so far this year the unit has responded to nearly 100 more mental health calls compared to last year. Authorities say calls to 911 for non-emergencies have dropped. We can see the recidivism go down almost immediately. We have a few of our regulars that instead of calling 911, they call us. And it's very organic. In Chicago, the Crisis Assistance Response and Engagement, or CARE, program meets daily. For the past year, it has been integrating behavioral health care professionals into the city's 911 response system. We've over relied on our colleagues in the police department to respond to every single one of those calls. When in reality, a lot of the time, the core need would be better addressed by a healthcare professional. The pilot program of reimagined teams are serving Chicago neighborhoods that put out higher 911 mental health calls. That van is canvassing the district. So they're not only just waiting to be dispatched from OEMC, they're also looking if there's individuals who they may see a need that's on site um, or on view. The program recently adding a third team with a significant difference. It will operate without a police officer. A team that now consists of a community paramedic from the Chicago Fire Department and a licensed clinician. With any event, it can go sideways and things can shift, which is part of why behind the scenes on this, we do have the police department is aware of where our vehicles are going. City officials see early success. Data analyzed by the I-Team finds so far there have been no arrests and no use of force. But on average, the numbers show less than one response a day by the care teams. I think we're showing you can very safely do this. I do think as we move forward, we're going to start taking more and more complicated calls. Back in Aurora, Brian Solace says he's a completely different person and doing well, but is uncertain of what would have happened without the reimagined intervention he received that day. I'm very grateful for this. They talked me down. They saved me, essentially. Authorities expect these programs to continue evolving, but both units we profiled tell us the programs will be limited with not enough follow-up mental health services or treatment facilities. Both, they say, are obstacles to preventing long-term solutions. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.